Hey guys, it's Riley from FixPectus.com. This is Pat. Hey guys, how's it going? So Pat was also born with Pectus, um, and he also managed to fix his condition without surgery through building muscle and exercise and stretching. And so um, in today's video, we're gonna take you guys through a workout, chest and out and oblique workout, um, super important for Pectus. Um, so yeah, Pat shares the same story as me, you know, he was very self-conscious of his body when he was younger, um, you know, People would like point at your chest and say like, "What's that hole in your chest?" and things, right? Yeah, people would poke it. Yeah, ask if they can do shots out of it. Yeah, that's the worst. Um, and so, like, he's been through it all. Like, also super self-conscious of it, and you know, he managed to fix it without surgery. Um, and you know, you guys know when I say fix, it's not miraculously making our chest flat. We still have an indent. It's just building a really good body and building key muscles in the right places that make the condition hardly noticeable, and to the point where you should be confident to take off your shirt. Because that's what, where we are now, when we were kids, we were super self-conscious, and now we're confident to take a punch shirt. So yeah. that's the ultimate goal, and that's what I'm saying when I say fix. So anyway, today we're gonna to take you through that workout, run you through some key pointers for training optimally for pectus, and training optimally in general to build muscle. Um, and so watch along and enjoy. Thanks, guys. So first up, we had three sets, and we did a superset. Probably we'll both say one of our favorite supersets for chest, um, especially for pectus with the crush grip press to get the inner chest fibers engaged. So what we did was incline flat dumbbell press with superset with incline crush grip dumbbell press uh, with it as a drop set. So eight to ten reps and RP eight to ten as well, uh, really pushing the intensity um, and you know really focusing on form. Uh, we did thirty kilos for the incline dumbbell press and then fifteen for the flat. What would be like some form cues for you on that to really optimally engage your chest and feel it? Um, yeah, this is a really good one. You really feel the burn, especially on that second set of, of the crush grip. Yeah. You really, really feel it burning and you have to push through to the end. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you really feel the, the squeeze in the chest as you're pushing it up, especially on the crush grip, uh, but of course also in the dumbbell. Yeah, that mind toss connection is huge, guys, especially on the crush grip. You can make that easy if you don't focus, yeah. but if you like slow it down, think about the chest and really feel it engaging. Next, we moved on to cable flies. Both of us like them from a high to low the most. I just feel my chest contracts more yeah. in that position. You're the same. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's easier to get a feel for for really working the chest there. Yeah. Um, and again, if you're doing it in the mirror, just just take a look at your chest and make sure again that you're just getting that big squeeze in. Yeah. And so one of the things I focus on for that is holding that contraction for a good second. Yeah. Because it's at that point where you're really engaging the chest, that's when you have got optimal reduction. So um, yeah, that was what I'm focusing on. I'm actually crossing over on each rep. You weren't doing that work. Yeah, so that's something I like to do and go like left on top, right on top. Yeah. Um, it's just a good way to make sure I'm really optimizing that range of motion. But otherwise, you can just go to the middle, but you really got to hold that squeeze. Yeah. Um, I've got the, when I do the ring um, push ups as well, then I'm always crossing them over as well. Yeah. You'll probably see it in another workout. Yeah, 100%. It's also a good movement, yeah. And then we moved on to dips. Now, for these dips, there's a few things. Firstly, to hit the chest more. I'm tr actively trying to lean over in the dip. So that's going to engage the chest more versus staying more upright. Secondly, tempo. For this, I said to Pat, we want three seconds down, three seconds up. So tempo is one of the training parameters that I tinker with for my clients and their programs that can make an exercise really burn. Yeah. It's a good way to get a pump, yeah? Just slow down the tempo. Yeah. And um, it's all about muscle muscle connection, guys. Like when you train, it's about engaging the muscle, it's about time under tension, it's not about the body doesn't know that you lifted X weight for X reps, it, it just has tension. So uh, eliciting a slow tempo is a really good way to optimize the tension. Um, so yeah, that hurt there. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think tempo training is probably one of the most overlooked things in, in training. Especially on those dips, just doing slow controlled movement. Yeah. Very good, yeah. yeah, I almost always program it, whether it's a, a numeric scheme like 3030, which is what we're doing with that, which is a three second eccentric and a three second concentric, or for my beginner class, and I'll overcomplicate things, I just program it as um, a slow controlled tempo um, as well. Then we moved on to, that was chest, our chest is well really pumped by then. We moved on to our abs and our obliques. So we started with one of my favorite movements, you guys have seen it, if you've subscribed to me or for a long time, the cable Russian oblique twist. Um, they don't, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good one for me as well. I haven't done them in a while, so. Yeah, yeah. it's a good pump. Yeah. You really feel it in your obliques. I'm sure you guys have seen the footage. Like our abs were super engaged, super challenging. So uh, for that, we did eight to ten reps each side as well. Um, and RP eight to ten for sure. But for my advanced clients, I have been training close to failure. 
what you really want to be doing, especially in isolation car movements. For beginners, not so much. We want to focus on form first, but um, we do want to push that RPE. If you don't know what RPE means, it means rate of perceived exhaustion, which is just like how close to failure you are training. And then we finish with hanging leg raises for these ones. Um, you really want to focus on getting that pelvis up. That's what engages yeah. the abs, right? Yeah. yeah. If you don't focus on that, it's hip flexors. So you really want to focus on that pelvis tilting up, uh, getting that range of motion all the way up. Trying to be slow and controlled too. Especially, on, yeah, especially on the way down as well. Uh, controlled up, but, but not just letting your legs fall back down with gravity on the way down. One hundred percent. That's hard. <laughs> you will feel it if you focus on slowing it down. You feel it in your arms weighing. So yeah, guys, that's a workout. I hope you learn some things. Yeah. Look, they said that I couldn't do it, so I went and did it. Did it. W's only, you know I've been winning. winning. Top of the world, the globe is spinning, spinning. If you know, you know I've been on a what mission? Mission. Go.